Our next guests are here to tell us about an animal rescue that goes above and beyond what most community shelters can provide. Black Dog Rescue has many highly successful programs that have improved the quality of life for more than 1,400 homeless dogs and their adopters. Molly Donnell is here with another special guest to share the details. Molly, thank you for joining us today. And tell us about our other special guest here. All right, well, our guest here, this is Mojave. He is one of our foster dogs that we have in Laramie currently. He's a two-year-old, we think he's probably a Border Collie Siberian Husky mix. He could have something else in there, but that's what we think right now. And he is, he's a, needs to work a little bit more on his manners, but he's an extremely affectionate dog. He loves people, he loves kids. He's not great with cats, but that's probably something he could work on. Um, but he's a very, very friendly dog, and he's looking for his forever home. So do you know anything about his story, where he came from, and is he living with a foster parent now? He is. Um, he is actually a dog that was adopted from our program, is a puppy, um, and then he was recently returned to the program, which is always kind of a shame when dogs come back, but um, it's nice that every dog that is ever taken into our program, whether it's when they're a puppy or older, if for some reason the family that adopts them can no longer keep them, we will always take them back. So it's kind of part of our promise to dogs that they'll never end up in the shelter again. Once they're accepted into the program, they're always a black dog dog and we always look out for their welfare. So that's one of the ways that Black Dog Rescue is different from, say, most um, typical community shelters. What are some other ways? Well, it's, um, it's the largest privately owned animal rescue in the state, so that's very nice that we're completely funded through private donors. Um, and we're, we don't really, it, it's technically a no-kill shelter, um, so that the dogs that are taken into our program, they're selected, they're actually last chance dogs from other shelters in Wyoming. We have a list where we take dogs um, that are on, looking to be on the, here buddy, on the euthanasia list. And then we put them into uh, foster homes where we then promote them out to the public. And then, that's it, buddy. And then they can be um, adopted into their forever home. So the program is really different than a conventional shelter that's run by the state where they're actually, they're picked up, they're kept there, and then they do face euthanasia. Um, but all of our dogs, once they're accepted into the program, we keep them for the rest of their lives or until they're taken into a forever home. I understand you've got a new program called the Mod Squad. Yes. How does, how, how does that work? What that is, we're kind of building it now. It's, we're going to get it started at the end of February. It's really going to be a group of kind of elite volunteers um, because we've done a lot of research and for different rescues across the country, we're learning that the main reason that dogs don't get adopted or have trouble staying in their homes once they are adopted from a rescue or a shelter is behavior problems. Whether they have bad manners, housebreaking, anything that's kind of difficult for the average adopter to handle. So we're building this group of volunteers, the Mod Squad, to work with some of our dogs that would be fantastic dogs otherwise that might have some harder behavior issues to turn them into picture-perfect adoptable dogs. And, and the behavior issues might be something as, well, you've got an active breed, and mm -hmm. maybe the family that had him just wasn't prepared for that level of activity. So that's considered a behavior problem. That's exactly it. That's why a lot of the dogs that get returned to the shelter or anything when we're, or even in our program to get returned, their behavior problems are exactly that. They're easy to address if someone has the time to do it, but a lot of times people who don't have dogs before, they're first time owners, they just don't understand what it takes to really get a dog to do those kinds of things. And with a dog like him, who's high energy, exactly that. They need someone who's going to be able to work with him and train him to be well behaved and have an outlet for all that energy. And are you located in Cheyenne primarily or? Um, Black Dog is actually, it, we're technically located across the state of Wyoming, um, but we do have active chapters in Cheyenne, Casper and Laramie. And we, our only office is in Cheyenne. So the central location really is in Cheyenne, but we are, we work with shelters across the state of Wyoming and we do have the chapters in Casper and Laramie where you can find a lot of our different adoption events. What kinds of opportunities do you have for volunteers? 
Uh, we have quite a few. Uh, for a rescue, we always say that there's always something someone can do. If you can't volunteer, you can foster. If you can't foster, you can adopt. If you can't adopt, you can donate. Um, so there's always something people can do if they want to help. So for volunteers right now, we're really looking for people who are going to want to work on that mod squad um, or foster homes. That's always the kind of volunteering that we're always, always looking for because that really is the lifeblood of the program. What does it take to be a foster home? Well, um, it, it's really anyone that wants to open their heart and their home to a dog. What, in order to uh, become a foster home, all you need to do is just go to our website, uh, which is bdar.org, and fill out one of our adoption applications and mark that you're interested in being a foster home. And from there, we'll take you through two separate trainings to kind of prepare you for what it takes to really um, take on one of these shelter dogs. And then from there, we work with you to select a dog that would hopefully fit in with your life and lifestyle. And then from there, you keep that dog until they find their forever home. Do you make any requirements that um, adoptive owners understand do basic dog training? We don't have any real requirements, um, but that is something we're kind of working on is our educational campaign as well. Um, because. Uh, Right now, as the program's kind of evolved, it really has started as a traditional rescue where our, it's mostly foster home based, where our main goal is to take dogs out of the shelter, get them in the foster homes and get them adopted. We're actually trying to work more a little bit on our educational side as well. And that's a big part of it is because once we have adopters that are more prepared for sometimes the struggles that it can take with the challenges of a foster dog, that only increases um, the ability for people usually to keep them in their homes or kind of understand what it takes to have a dog. Is Mojave ready now for his adoptive, I mean his real home, forever home? Oh absolutely. It would definitely um, be someone who probably has some energy and has a good way to get this guy out and take him on walks and all that good stuff, but absolutely. All our dogs that we have on our website um, are ready for adoption. We have some that have special needs or some health different things that they need, but we're always up front and work with people in that. But all our dogs listed there are absolutely ready to go home. Molly, thanks for coming today. And Mojave, thank you for being with us. <laughs> oh, he's, he's ready to go. <laughs> I mean, he's ready to go for a walk, but I'm sure he's appreciated it very much.